it's tough to 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 place this story in terms of its significance because there's every reason to believe this is not even I don't even know if this is the uh, I don't know where you would put this, but it certainly seems to be more like uh, act maybe late in act one, early Mm -hmm. in act two, uh, if anything. Maybe this is the way that you start act two of this narrative with uh, Donald Trump and the uh, investigation by Robert Mueller. But this week we saw two arrests of Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. And then a, I guess, an announcement, if you will, of an earlier arrest by a purportedly low-level advisor to the Trump administration or Trump campaign foreign policy guy named Papadopoulos. Let's start with Manafort and Gates, because once we get to Papadopoulos, in some ways, Papadopoulos, uh, to, to, to start with Manafort and Gates, sort of buries the lead a little bit um, <laughs> because the Papadopoulos stuff seems to be the big stuff. But uh, let's just talk about Manafort and Gates, because I know you've written about this uh, extensively and uh, read about it. But uh, you your uh, your piece, Manafort and the Dominoes. Here's why Donald Trump is losing sleep. Why is uh, why is Donald Trump losing sleep about Paul Manafort? Well, it's funny. I mean, you know, I think that most people, and certainly the White House, their first reaction to the Manafort um, indictment, and of course, we'd been breathlessly speculating over the weekend, the the news had been leaked on Friday evening, uh, that, that some indictments were coming down, and nobody knew who exactly it was, but I think probably Paul Manafort and Michael Flynn were at the top of the list, um, and it turned out to be Manafort and his uh, associate, uh, Rick Gates. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that the White House, you know, sort of initially decided to say, oh, this happened a long time ago. It has nothing to do with us or the campaign. And in fact, Donald Trump tweeted out, no collusion, you know, with big exclamation points. Well, that's fine. But Donald Trump himself had to know something. When he looked at that indictment or heard about it, I'm sure he didn't actually read it. Um, when he actually heard, when he heard about it, what had to be going off in his head were very, very loud alarm bells because what Robert Mueller was basically saying with this indictment of Paul Manafort was, I am not confined, my my uh, investigation is not confined to the Russian collusion uh, mandate that we have. I am going where the evidence takes me. And there was a lot of evidence about Paul Manafort that had been gathered prior to the campaign prior to Paul, Man- he remember he had been under a right. He'd been under investigation to- uh, two or three years ago. Yeah, I mean, so that he'd been in the sights of law enforcement uh, for some time. So they had a lot of evidence kind of already gathered about him, and they went with it. And by the way, this means that Rod Rosenstein, the uh, deputy attorney general who's overseeing the special prosecutor, must have signed off on it and said, "Yeah, go ahead." Mm-hmm. Um, which means that Mueller basically, in my view was telling Donald Trump, I'm going there. And if he's going there, that means Donald Trump and the decades of money laundering and dirty dealings that he has been involved in, and there's a lot of evidence that he has been. In fact, there was even an FBI um, investigation of Russian money laundering in Trump Tower that went on for two years. I mean, let's talk about invest, you know, I don't know that that has anything directly to do with Trump, but let's just say that he, the world that Donald Trump has been working and living in for decades is uh, he's got Russian mobsters, oligarchs, dirty money, money laundering. It's everywhere. The tentacles are everywhere in the Trump empire. And he has to know that. So that's why I think Donald Trump looks like he's just been slugged in the face when you see him that, over the course of this last week, because he knows that Mueller is not limited and he's going to keep going. And I think that that's what the Manafort Gates indictments really told him. And, uh, you know, if he, he's, I've always believed that he was just as, if not more, worried about investigations into his financial dealings as he ever was Absolutely. about Russia collusion. I, I, first off, I totally agree with, with that premise. I think it's, 
I think to the extent that there um, that there may or may not be some type of collusion, I would be very surprised if he had anything other than a passing awareness of it simply because um, he seems to have a passing awareness of just about anything that's happening in, in front of him. He, the, half the time he doesn't even know who he's staring at uh, right in front of his face, it seems. But I think you're absolutely right that um, he has been very um, concerned about investigations because of a lot of other things uh, that are there. And I think your point about uh, Paul Manafort, the, impl- the, the implications of Paul Manafort, frankly, I hadn't even contemplated that very much over the course of the week. I mean, I think there's... Um, there's been a lot of speculation that Manafort was rolled up because they first because they they had so much low hanging fruit on this guy that uh, they thought okay he he's a good candidate to flip, but from Mueller's perspective, and we're going to talk about uh, Papadopoulos um, in in a mo in, in a minute, but from Mueller's perspective. Um, and maybe there was a and there's obviously a reason why we hear all these three things at the same time, because we should remind people Papadopoulos was arrested over over a month ago. Right. And uh, and uh, they've been he's been active as a um, as a at the very least, he's been talking to them. It's also quite possible that he's been uh, getting other people to talk to him while wearing a wire. We don't know about this, but it's been speculated. But um, you, you're absolutely right that this signals, and not just to Donald Trump, but to everybody involved in the investigation, we're not, if we, if you've done something wrong and we come across it, because we're going to come across it, because we're going to look at everything about your life, if you are remotely attached to this, this is a signal not only to Donald Trump that, hey, you got um, big problems uh, with your your portfolio, but to Jared Kushner, to um, uh, to uh, it could be to Steve Bannon, perhaps, although I think oddly he could be the only one involved here who is uh, who is sort of criminality is more just uh in terms of his morals and he wears it on his sleeve <laughs> but um but there could be other people Corey lewandowski um has some interesting uh you know questions around him i think uh there are others who uh could be implicated ivana Tr- uh, uh, trump for all we know uh, ivanka so well we're going to take a break when we come back let's talk about papadopoulos uh because uh the manafort stuff and we should probably uh just go over some of this although i imagine most people have have heard a lot about it but the papadopoulos stuff is the stuff that i think is going to be uh much more uh focused towards the relationship with russia and i think papadopoulos may end up leading to some major perjury charges for some I mean, maybe the chief law enforcement officer in the entire country. We'll talk about that when we return. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. We're talking to the great Digby, Heather Parton.